Goddards by Sir Edwin Lutyens. Sir Edwin Lutyens, 1869-1944, was considered Britain's foremost architect of the early 20th century. His early work mainly consisted of country houses in the arts and crafts style. After about 1900, his style gave way to a more conventional classicism, which produced some of his most celebrated works, such as the Cenotaph and his works for the War Graves Commission after the First World War, and his government buildings in New Delhi. Following on from my previous pieces on The Grange at Ramsgate and The Red House, I want to look at one of Lutyen's early houses, Goddard's at Abinger Common in Surrey. Lutyen's houses are mostly still in private hands and therefore very difficult to visit. Goddard's is now owned by the Lutyen's Trust and leased to the Landmark Trust. It is possible to visit it, as I did, on one of their open days. Goddard's was originally designed and built in 1898 to 1900 for Frederick James Mirilles, whose family business owned a department store in Moscow. It was not originally built as a house, but as a holiday home of rest for ladies of small means, governesses, nurses and others deserving of rest in the countryside. Only in 1910 did Mirilles ask Lutyens to extend the house as a home for his son. As originally designed, it was intended for use only in the summer, and so had no bathrooms, for instance. This is the first of Lutyen's houses, which is almost symmetrical. Not far from the boundary to the road, the east entrance presents a simple frontage, with twin gables flanked by tall brick chimneys. The main frontage faces the garden, where two wings extend out from the central range containing the hall. The wings are splayed to form a butterfly plan, which was very fashionable at the time, aiming to capture as much sun as possible. In Gavin Stamp's words, Lutyens revelled in the variety of building materials at Goddard's. Roofs are of tile, with courses of Horsham stone slates at lower level. Walls are mainly rough cast, while the windows have brick mullions and stone transoms, which serve as contrasting features to the pale yellow walls. On the flanking elevations, the use of tapering buttresses is reminiscent of Voise's work. The elegant brick chimneys are a major feature. Stamp also comments that the ends of the wings are superb examples of Lutyen's handling of form, with the wall plane stepped back by slated slopes, first on the outer walls, then on the end wall as the building rises. Inside, oak beams give a very arts and crafts feel, which, no doubt, William Morris would have loved. Lutyens had a lot of fun with the fireplaces. The one in the hall plays games with brick arches and coves, while there are two magnificent ingle nooks in the rooms at the ends of the wings. An eccentric feature, dating back to the house's original use, is a skittle alley, with a demountable section of the trough for returning the balls where it crossed a door. Lutyens played a game of skittles there, commenting that, I like using things I make. Outside, the wings flank an enchanting courtyard garden, designed in collaboration with Gertrude Jekyll, which became a well-established partnership. Where does this place Lutyens in the history of domestic architecture at the turn of the 20th century? This early phase of his work seems to fall squarely into the Romantic arts and crafts tra tradition, though Lutyens is not normally known as an arts and crafts architect. Afterwards, as I have already noted, his work took on a more formal, grandiose, classically based style. I find it interesting that Nicholas Pevsner, in his important work Pioneers of Modern Design, makes no mention of the most important British architect of his time. 
Perhaps this is because his designs were very rooted in history, albeit a modern take on it, and were not influential on the architects who were bringing in the modern movement at the same time that Luttians was working. He was born two years after Frank Lloyd Wright and a year after Charles Rennie Mackintosh, yet despite his prodigious output, these other two are considered much more important figures in the development of modernism. <laughs>